Oh, goodness. Can you all see my screen? Perfect. So hi, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the Squisk Science Symposium. This is Squisk's first year of the symposium, the brainchild of Noeen here. And I have had the honor of helping her out with this this year, and it's been really fantastic. Today, we are joined by Angina. Sorry, I'm going to be really terrible with all your names. And she is the Director and Strategic Business Consultant at ANRS Consultant Inc. And we also have Brittany, and she is a tetanus toxoid vaccine manufacturing expert at Sanofi Pasteur, Canada. And today presenting is Tofa from the INRS Institute Armand Frappier Health of Biotechnology. And yeah, and she's gonna be speaking to us today. I'm pretty excited. Before we start, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and unceded land of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish people. And I just invite everyone to take a moment to reflect on the land that we are on and the people who were here in time in memoriam and all of the traditions and cultures that they have. And just think about how we can embrace those and bring those into our everyday lives and practices. So we are in our second. Would you be okay. able to enable screen sharing with me? Let me make you co-host quickly, so. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so back before I got cut off, today we're in round two of we're in our second presentation of round two, which is in biotechnology. And as I said, we have Tofa presenting today. Oops, should I go the wrong way? Yeah, and so today our judges, um, as yeah, sorry, as I, as I already said, those will be introduced. And Tofa will be speaking on microbiosal effectiveness of irradiation from gamma and X-ray sources, which I'm sure I said terribly. And before we get started, I just want to take a moment to recognize our sponsors who have helped put the science symposium on today. We have Northeastern University of Vancouver, and they have a fantastic 95% employment rate for biotechnology. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check them out. We also have Admare, and they are great if you want to polish your business skills in science, and they have a, an academy that you can check that out on. We also have Abcelera, and they discovered the antibody that neutralizes viral variants of COVID-19, and we're very thankful to have them as a sponsor today, as well as, I hope I don't even know if I can say this, Akitas, and maybe Noeen can pronounce it for me. Akitas, yeah, that's correct, Akitas. Thank you, thank you. And their lipid nanoparticle delivery system is the key element in the development of the Pfizer vaccine. On top of that, we also have Microsoft, and they have a lot of really great internships in IT, if you're interested, as well as Sixth Sense Strategy Group. And they are really great. And if you want to get into consultancy, you should definitely check them out. Oh, and then that is all from me for now. So I'll stop sharing there. And I would like to pass the floor over to our judges and see if they would like to introduce themselves today. Or perhaps we can start with Tofa. Oh, here we go. Okay, I can share my screen now. Oh, sorry, we'll just have our judges introduce themselves and then okay. I'll give the floor to you, Tofa. So, Angela, would you like to start? Yeah. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anjana Govindarajan. I'm a trained biological scientist uh, with a PhD in biotechnology. Uh, I have uh, postdoctoral experience in India as well as in Canada. Uh, currently, I work as a strategy business consultant. Uh, I mainly, uh, I, I have experience in establishing partnership and collaboration between industry, academia, and uh, government institutes. I embrace life values of equity, diversity, and inclusion by empowering the women in science. Thank you. Thank you. And Brittany? Hi everyone, so my name is Brittany and I have my PhD in chemistry from the University of Guelph here in Ontario. I did a postdoc at Harvard Medical School in Boston 
And then I moved on to a startup vaccine company in Cambridge. And I finally ended up here in Toronto at Sanofi Pasture, where I am the tetanus toxoid manufacturing expert uh, for our vaccine lines and bulk antigen platform. Thank you. And Tofa, I will pass it over to you so that you can introduce yourself and begin your presentation. And for everyone in the audience, I would just like to remind you again, if you have any questions, please type them in that chat box and after her presentation, we'll ask those as well. So Tofa, off to you. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, 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 thank you very much. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is Tofa Begum. Uh, I'm a doctoral student at um, uh, INRS uh, Institute Armor Prepair Health Biotechnology under the supervision of uh, Professor Monique Lekua, uh, Director of Canadian Food uh, Irradiation Center, and uh, uh, the core director is Peter. I would like to pass my sincere gratitude to my honorable judge in this context, Dr. Brittany and Dr. Anjana. And also my moderator, Dr. Noyan Malik, Malik and Ashley and all audience who, uh, who are here, being here. So I am going to presenting my uh, published article that I submitted in this context and selected as 15 finalists. So under the title microbicidal effectiveness of irradiation rate against um, foodborne illness pathogen, Assyria coli, Salmonella type imurium, and Listeria monocytogens in rice. It is published in a well-renewed international journal, LWT, Food Science and Technology, in 2020. So, uh, food loss is, uh, according to the um, report of United Nations, the world population became uh, 50 million uh, in 2000. By 2050, so to, to increase the um, uh, morphity. But unfortunately, 1.3 billion ton, which is one third of the total production of food, is lost every year, which worth is one trillion dollar US dollar. Every year, we lost this food just post harvest mismanagement. All over the world, 50 to 60 percent of grains, for example, rice, in the cereals, wheat are lost by insect infestation, um, uh, uh, other insect infestation, uh, microbial contamination. And in the world, more than 50 percent of the people directly or indirectly depends on the uh, so this problem, food loss problem, is not a problem only in the developing country. It's a problem also in the developed and industrial is be true. Even in Canada, every year we lose a lot of food, which worth is $31 billion each year. So there is many factors responsible for food loss. Uh, so they are widely categorized as biotic factors and abiotic factors. So here I am working with mainly focusing in my PhD is the biotic molds or fungi and insect because uh, they are they are contribute uh, contribute in food loss more than other factors. If you see here, 50 total food 15 to 20 percent is lost by insect infestation just in during uh, the storage time and 10 to 15 percent is lost by pathogenic uh, pathogenic attack and um, in canada uh, according to the report of canadian food inspection agency they said um, uh, one people in eight one one in eight is total four million people canadian are getting infected every year after consuming the contaminated 
food. Uh, people become hospitalized and we, every consuming the contaminated food, and which is very dangerous, um, uh, especially for immunocompromised patient and the babies. And um, uh, um, and it is on. Um, uh, it's now. It's, it is a bum. And according to the report of World Health Organization, all over the world, six six hundred million people become sick and 420,000 people become die every year after consuming the contaminated food. So it is now a matter of burning issue uh, in uh, atomic energy, international atomic energy agency. Health Canada, Canadian Food Inspection Agency, food industry, and uh, also the consumer, uh, fungi, and the bacteria in the food. Because they are very dangerous, they secrete the toxin on food, reduce the quality of the food, to and which reduce the market value. And uh, they create the uh, many dangerous diseases, For they are related to gastrointestinal diseases, some cases nervous disease, central nervous diseases, and they are dangerous for immuno, immunocompromised patient. And um, every year, uh, uh, here I am. Uh, um, uh, here is uh, some images with um, uh, cereal, rice with insect. I am working with that, and the rice with contaminated um, rice with um, growth of mold. And uh, so the. Um, uh, in the food industry is two Canadian food industry and one uh, industry from uh, food industry from United States come together in collaboration and contribute my project, uh, how to double, how to control them. And, uh, and finally, they will apply this product what I will develop in the, um, they will apply in the food and uh, they will commercialize it to prevent this uh, uh, problem. So there is many strategy actually uh, applied by industry. Uh, it's, uh, for example, chemical preservatives. Um, for example, they use phosphate, methyl bromide, phosphine. It, environmental friendly and the, pet, the problem is the pathogens or insect become resistant to them after a long time exposure. And it may sometimes act as carcinogenic agent. And we and it is not on, not environmental friendly also. So the industry and consumer want to replace it by some uh, some natural product, for example, natural antimicrobials, plant extracts, and essential oil. I am hearing working in the essential oil, plant derived essential oil. It is very important because it is widely accepted. It is naturally collected, and it has a strong antimicrobial, antifungal insecticidal and antiviral capacities. It is low cost and easy processability. And it is um, recognized as safe by Food and Drug Administration USA. US. Uh, it is um, essential oil. I'm introducing here essential oil. Essential oil is a plant from uh, collecting from plant. It is this complex mixture of plant secondary metabolite. Another technique is a uh, food irradiation uh, to con control the microbes uh, to keep the food good, um, uh, which is also called cold pasteurization. And we, um, uh, food irradiation technique is made more effective, safe technology, which is approved by WHO. And this technique didn't change the nutritional value of food and um, without changing the sensory values of the food. It is a single process, but it has multi multiple solutions. For example, it can prevent the sprout inhibition in onion, potato, ginger, garlic. It can uh, prevent insect disinfestation. It used for shelf life extension of the food, pathogen reduction in the spices, and also uh, stop the fruit ripening. So uh, when we combine essential oil with that, uh, it we found that essential oil and irradiation technique in combined together they work synergistically 
and reduce the concentration of essential oil and also they can reduce the doses of radiation. So there is uh, basically three types of um, radiation is used commercially for food decontamination. They are X-ray, gamma ray and electronic beam. So if, we, if I show you how essential oil and radiation work together and how they reduce the concentration and doses, when a bacterial or microbial cell come in contact with for here I showed a list my previous slide that um, for, for microbes, we need 10 kilograms. It means 10,000 grams yeah, to kill them. But if I, uh, but it is high dose and it needs time. But if, and if I use low dose in, con in the combination of and the pathogen is getting irradiated, they, will, they may regenerate again. But if there is a present radiation, may lose the integrity, contact the essential oil, they allow the, split the cytoplasm, and they may bind with the um, uh, DNA, and also they can inhibit the ATP synthesis. And also, they can interrupt the channel uh, to stop the bacterial signals. So, the, so in the so in in our in my PhD project, I found that when I apply uh, combined treatment with uh, natural antimicrobials with radiation, it is more more efficient, uh, more more time, less time consuming, more effective, and less expensive. So I did my um, experiment here. Uh, there is the methodology I'm explaining. Um, I took uh, 10 gram of rice in the petri dish, which is inoculated previously inoculated with a six log colony forming unit of pathogen E. coli, Salmonella, Typhimurium, and Listeria monocytogens. And here I put a sponge with uh, 10 microliter of um, uh, um, active compound which is uh, um, oregano and thyme essential oil and i cover it um, uh, and i passed through the um, 0 0.25 to 1.5 kilogram radiation uh, under different um, sources and different ty uh, types of uh, radiation source and different dose rate uh, for example x-ray 0 0.76 kilogram per hour uh, gamma ray 0 0.22 kilogram per hour and two types of High dose rate uh, 9 and 3.9 kilograms per hour. After that, I did the microbiological analysis uh, to measure the relative sensitivity. Relative sensitivity is um, uh, unit by using that, we can understand that how much essential after using the antimicrobial, how much it increases its radio sensitivity uh, to the radiation. And by measuring the D10 uh, value of the irradiated sample alone divided by D10 sample irradiated in combined. D10 is the dose of radiation uh, um, need to kill the 90% of pathogen. So here is the result if you see for Asia uh, coli O157A7, which is uh, most common um, pathogen found in food at um, gamma ray at high dose rate 9.1 kg per hour it need to not zero 326 gray uh, doses to kill 90 percent of the pathogen in rice but when we combine the treatment um, irradiation treatment with essential oil it reduced the concentration dose reduce the doses uh, at 0.274 which is statistically significant and it increased the radio sensitivity 1.2. Here, if we see the gamma ray uh, at a medium dose rate, it needs 0.228 kilogram, but with essential oil, it reduced the concentration to kill the 90% pathogen. And it increased the radio sensitivity of E. coli 1.22 by using essential oil. For here, 
for it is it happened for uh, we get the positive result when we get the better result when we use combined treatment rather than alone here we found the listeria monocytogens is um, more uh, radio tolerant pathogen compared to e coli and salmonella type immurium and if we compare three gamma ray sources with x ray x ray we will see that here for x ray the pathogen is more resistant to x ray because to kill 90% of pathogen by using x ray we need 403 gray of radiation dose but for um, uh, combined treatment it is uh, 0 0.218 kilogram it happened for each cases uh, so the conclusion of my um, uh, article was gamma doses rate dose rate did not significant statistically the x-ray had significantly lower microbicidal effectiveness compared to gamma rays and combined gamma and x-ray radiation with essential oil increased the microbicidal effectiveness compared to irradiation alone here i am showing the synergistic effect between irradiation and natural preservatives from my another study uh, for example to control the mold aspergillus nizer which is um, very dangerous in food they can secrete the neuro aflatoxin which is neurotoxic and if someone consume it they can immediately uh, they can it, um, they, it may lead death so when we use only in rice when we inoculated aspergillus nizer is rich after seven weeks the, um, it reached 10 log CFU per gram. But when we use only uh, combined with um, the bioactive packaging film in, with irradiation, only 750 gray irradiation, it reduced the uh, fungal count until yet prevent the aspergillus nizer with but here we use 750 gray only which is less time consuming le, more less expensive and more efficient here i am trying to show some images with um, uh, store rice uh, after two months so here this rice is containing um aspergillus nizer alone with rice after two months is become completely dark with uh, fungal colony and um, it is only with radiation doses and it, the, the there is i'm going to show you here is uh, four types of um, pathogen i used alone and in combination with the natural preservatives so I would like to say thank you. Um, I would like to acknowledge my uh, supervisor, Professor Monique Lekua, Dr. Peter Follett, my co-director, International Atomic Energy Agency who funded for this project, uh, Dr. Brittany, Dr. Anjana, uh, Dr. Noen, and Ashley. And I would also like to... Uh, 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 say thank you to the all of our sponsor not the av celera aq task and six sense uh, strategy group and molly thank you so much wonderful thank you topa that was really fascinating i would like to open it up to our judges and see if they have any questions on tofa's presentation uh, i would like to start uh, very good presentation, Tofa. Thank you for that. Um, I, I see that you have used uh, gamma, X-ray, and EB. Thank you. Why you have not uh, taken UV radiation as a control, or because uh, in post harvest there are already they are using for the uh, to protect uh, cereals. They have already implemented and they are using uv radiation so why you have not included that here okay uh, so i am going to uh, uh, work there is x-ray and gamma ray not electron beam and 
For example, comparing X-ray and gamma ray, which one is more effective? And uh, commercially, uh, according to FDA, uh, CDC, and WHO, they recommended only three uh, radiation source for Fourier radiation. It is uh, not, um, UV is not recommended for Fourier radiation and it is not commercially convenient also, the UV radiation. So for X-ray, uh, I use uh, a small X-ray machine in our institute and gamma ray because we have for gamma ray we are going to use the cobalt 60 uh, uh, radio uh, cobalt 60 or cesium 137 but um, uh, the um, uh, the project behind the history of the project but um, they have uh, to they want to um, uh, replace the gamma because x ray and electronic beam is more con uh, there is no uh, uh, atom um, is used here. There is just for X-ray and gamma ray, they want to replace uh, gamma ray by using X-ray and uh, electron beam. So uh, they use different, they, I am going to use how they work, which one is more convenient and which one can reduce. And for UV, it's not, um, uh, as far as I know, the FDA, WHO and CDC allowed only X-ray, gamma ray, and electron beam for food irradiation. Okay, because I have seen UV radiation used for, uh, uh, I mean, protecting uh, cereals like rice and wheat in post-harvest facilities. Yeah, uh, and you said that uh, you have used uh, essential oils, so. Uh, Generally, these oils have a little bit of smell or something. So did you test that? Because it shouldn't uh, change the taste or, uh, I mean, uh, smell or anything after uh, these treatment, right? So have you, have you tested all those things? Yes, it is called sensory analysis, yes. So I am using here only 10 microliter. Because if I using 10 microliter essential oil alone, it will not work very well, but in combined, they work very well. So uh, after the experiment, we did the synergistic, um, uh, sorry, sensorial analysis by uh, when we use it, we cook the rice and uh, we ask for um, uh, panel to uh, take the smell, see visually texture and uh, um, uh, compare with the control without any treatment. So they are, um, uh, they are evaluating, they didn't found any um, sensorial effect here. So in as food microbiologist, as I am working in the natural preservatives, I am always concerned about, it doesn't change the smell test. It is the main concern here. So we are actually apply them in the, um, if we use directly, they are, they are strong mess strong, but we are encapsulated them inside the biopolymer to modify the packaging package for food. So it released very slowly over the storage period and uh, it didn't change the uh, uh, taste and smell because we are testing the control release also with time how much they release and with time what is the smell. It, does it really change any effect? on the smell or test, we also consider this. Okay, uh, I have a few more, but uh, I would like to yeah. leave the floor to Brittany. <laughs> yeah, Brittany, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I just had a question about, did you look at the nutrient profile after you treat them? So will the rice, you know, provide the same nutrients after you treat them with these x-rays or gamma rays? So so oh, sorry. Uh, Tofa, actually, we cannot hear you. Can you please? Uh... Okay, so Brittany may ask uh, me about the nutritional uh, value. Okay. 
So if you see the um, uh, here, uh, um, we, if we apply the radiation doses until 10 kilogram for microorganism and spices 30 kilogram up to the nutritional low. So I am not testing the nutrition by comparing the control without a treatment. So the panel said they didn't get the difference among them. So they cannot differentiate them. So in that case, I get the good point. Yes, but for nutritional value, chem chemically, I didn't analyze. And, but as I am using um, 750 gram, it, it, uh, literature said it will not affect the food. Okay, thank you. Um, I had another one more question. So you mentioned you use the essential oils of oregano and thyme. Uh, why specifically did you choose those oils? Okay, I tested 30 essential oils. Uh, 30 different essential oils selected uh, based on the literature. So I found that oregano and thyme give me the um, strong antimicrobial, antifungal, and also insecticidal property as I am working on those. Uh, Tofa, I would suggest you stop sharing this and, screen um, no, because the uh, most pathogenic bacteria connect. aspergillus nizar, uh, mold aspergillus nizar, penicillium chrysogenum, and uh, Escherichia coli salmonella, and they are main, major pathogen for food contact, foodborne disease. And uh, in Cheeto test, and I found that oregano thyme alone shows. Yes, you are not hearing me. Yeah, Tofa, we recommend you turn off your video share because you are cutting in and out a little bit and it might make yeah. it. Yes, uh, yeah. Okay. So because, you know, uh, uh, sometimes uh, the internet connection gets unstable. So yeah. when you are speaking, it just disconnects. And when it connects, then everything goes a little faster and then goes back to normal speed. So I would just suggest Sorry. that you, it's, it's fine. It's just a technical yeah. glitch. It happens with everyone. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can uh, just turn off this video, uh, like slide sharing, okay? So if you want, you can repeat your answer. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, so I tested different types of yeah. essential oil. I found that oregano and thyme are most, more efficient. And uh, I also tried, I combined both of them because I tested one by one to reduce their concentration as they are not um, uh, change the organoleptic property of the food. So when I, it's called a synergistic effect between two essential oil, I mix them with checkerboard method and I, uh, I mix them and I, if they showed synergy, oregano and thyme, when I mix together, they show synergistic effect. It means they reduce the concentration when they use alone. They reduce the concentration and then they, they showed the better antimicrobial activity when they combine with re reduced concentration. So I choose two um, combination. I have, I have developed in my PhD five different types of formulation. I used one for this uh, publication. So I have four and I have collaboration work with the tree industry, food industry. So yeah. So I choose oregano time based on my um, experiment. Uh, I have a question, Tofa. So you said uh, you selected uh, E. coli and Salmonella based on, like, I mean, based on that they are very uh, pathogenic or foodborne pathogens. Uh, you said like that. So my point is, uh, have you looked at the specific pathogens, foodborne pathogens, uh, in rice? because uh, rice, uh, uh, in rice, we have many uh, diseases, like for example, bacterial leaf blight, 
which is caused by Santomonas oryzae. So for that, nowadays, we are uh, reducing chemical pesticides and we are moving more towards biocontrol. So biocontrols like uh, Pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is also a food foodborne pathogen or it, it produces illness basically. Yes. So why you have not considered specific uh, uh, microbes uh, in rice than going for a general? Why, why, why you have not specified on these pattern microbes? Okay, so my project, I have three parts. One is I am going to work with um, insect for and the two types of food model I am working with. One is with rice and another one is with yogurt. Okay, mm -hmm. so for rice is contaminated basically uh, uh, Cetophila soriza is insect. It can make the rice in two months make it powder. And as I said, more than 50% of the people all over the world consume rice as their main food. And uh, then, so it, it is economically lost. So I target Cetophila soriza rice soevil. Uh, is another part. I published one article so uh, on that and it's my second article. As I am working with yogurt and rice, yogurt and rice basically contaminated by um, mold, Aspergillus nizer, penicillium, Aspergillus flebus. And uh, when the yogurt is mainly contaminated by uh, E. coli, salmonella, listeria, and the pet, uh, uh, Aspergillus nizer, mucor sarsiniloid, and also the um, uh, also uh, salmonella type immurium. They are the most common pathogens. So when I start my project, I have to choose the most common pathogen uh, contaminated who is, they are, who, what is the most common pathogen in Canada or in United States as I have collaboration work to country. So I have to consider them which, uh, pathogen is mostly responsible and more resistant to all treatments. So every time we get the um, Pseudomonas originosa is spoiled as microbes, but E. coli and uh, Salmonella is mm, uh, danger. E. coli 015H7, it is more pathogenic because they are um, um, they can survive both environment, aerobic, anaerobic, low pH, high pH, so they are to control them are they are more tricky so we if we consider the more more resistant pathogen then my um, uh, final product my final active formulation will work on other also that was my and i am selecting the five different types of pathogen uh, three mold to six types of pathogen three mold and three pathogenic bacteria and one insect against it uh, in two food model. Yes, yeah, that's it. So which is another fungi you are, you are targeting? Yes, it's a fungi. Uh, I am not discussing this article about the fungi. Fung for fungi, I will write another article on that as my PhD work. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions from our judges? No? I'm okay. Um, I have a few questions if you don't mind, Topa. Yeah, sure. I'm wondering, is this treatment being practically applied anywhere today? Are we seeing it out in the field anywhere? Yes, it is practically applied. And uh, I have collaboration work with tree food industry. After my, uh, when I am in the third year of my PhD, I will, I'm writing my thesis now. So after I, we have a talk with my supervisor and the industry, they will start, they are apply, asking the food authority in Canada and US because they will do it, they will try to uh, do it in the, uh, apply it in the real food because they are funded to develop something for their company to control mm -hmm. that pathogen for their yogurt and rice Yes, it will be finally applicable. Cool. And I was also wondering, is there a possibility for pathogens to become resistant to this type of treatment? Yeah, it's not possible for because if we use one one if we use one treatment, for example, 
there is some pathogen which are they are become radiation uh, tolerant mm -hmm. they are resi become resistant so and sm so we are not using here one treatment we are using and for if we use one treatment it increase the doses and increase the concentration to control them but when we combine treat, use combined treatment they they kill them because essential oil is containing a mixture of active components they contain for oregano thyme they contain thymol carbacrol p thymine um, and so many uh, for more than 40 uh, chemical component they contain so when in among them some of them are uh, phenolic some of them are so for example p thymine is a um, uh, aliphatic compound found in uh, oregano uh, oregano but when p thymine is used alone it is not really war it is not a strong antimicrobial okay but when in combine with time time it can uh, attach the membrane of the cell it can um, uh, op it can increase the porosity of the cell and it can facilitate the time to go enter of the bacterial cell and uh, so when they mix together, they um, increase their activity rather than alone. Yeah, they are work like that. And thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to invite anyone from our audience, if they have any questions, now is the time. You can either speak up or drop them in the chat and we would be happy to ask Tofa about them. Actually, there is only one question in the chat box from Jackson. Can you see? Yeah, I do believe Brittany's question touched on that a little bit, but we can circle back for sure. Uh, Jackson was asking if the treatment affects the vitamin or nutritional levels of the food that you're treating. For nutritional uh, below of the food? Yeah. Okay, it's not um, uh, as essential oil is volatile in nature, so it's not really exist in the food. Mm -hmm. So it's not really change the um, uh, nutritional below. It's not um, exist in the food after application. And the radiation as I am using, I should use uh, 2000 gray to kill 90% of the pathogen. But here I am using 750 gray, which is allowed with, uh, by FDA and uh, WH and CDC, because this is not really a change, because they are allowed these doses of radiation, just um, because they know uh, uh, that these doses are not really change the nutritional value, and it is not radioactive. They didn't make the food radioactive, and which is completely um, safe for consumer, yes. Wonderful, thank you. Oh, and Mina has asked, is the technology equally efficient on all types of food? Uh, no, no, it's not efficient all types of food. Um, for example, uh, we cannot irradiate yogurt because if we irradiate yogurt, there is probiotic inside the yogurt. So mm -hmm. it may kill the probiotic with the contaminant so we are not going through do, to irradiate the yogurt or maybe milk or they irradiate by low doses because there is protein in the milk. So if we irradiate high doses, so it may affect the protein. And uh, for rice and spices, we can irradiate high doses up to 30 kilogram. So it's not the same for all food and it is listed which food will go through which doses. Yeah, it is listed by FDA because FDA um, regulated this um, irradiation food. They are the only one who regulated this. Wonderful, thank you. Can we use this on uh, all fresh produce basically with this? But with different concentration, you know. Yeah, yes, different concentration, different doses. Because we often get this uh, E. coli and salmonella contamination on lettuce and all. Yes, yeah, so recall of the food. If we see the um, uh, uh, news of uh, Health Canada or Food Inspection Agency, they always call them recall the food from the market. 
this uh, due to salmonellosis, contamination of salmonella or contamination of E. coli. Yeah, so it is a great loss for the industry if they uh, take out their product from the market. And in Canada, every year, uh, we we'll, one people in eight is the total four million Canadian getting infected every year, just to eat the contaminated food. For my in my uh, project, the the interesting thing is, when I am working with yogurt, I don't know if you see notice sometimes yogurt. You buy yogurt, you put it in the freezer, and uh, Sometimes you didn't open, but when you open to eat, you will see there is some uh, black um, or greenish fungi, or there is the contamination that you are not really visible. It's not visible because it's white in color, but there is the presence of mycelium, which is very dangerous. Uh, so company want to, um, the company don't want to add something on the yogurt because they want the um, uh, keep the sensory and the taste same but they want to modify something so we are i am going to modify the top layer of the um, uh, top layer when we open the yogurt there is uh, aluminium i am going to modify i am i am modifying that aluminium with my active compound so it will release over the storage time on the surface of the yogurt. And uh, when someone open it, the, as there is volatile compound, it uh, will be evaporated. So it will not really affect on the yogurt sensorial test. Yes. So I'm working like this. So after my, I think we are going to collaboration um, to, um, for more commercialization with my project. Awesome. That's really interesting with the idea with the yogurt lid. That's, I'm excited to see that. Jackson has asked, could the treatment, the radiation process used on, be used on water and fluids and in water treatment plants? Uh, maybe gamma radiation is not uh, good for water because it may uh, um, create the ion, or split the water if it is high dose. Yeah, maybe what radiation, gamma is not good for water treatment. Wonderful. I believe that's all the questions we have today. So I wanted to give our judges the opportunity to give any closing remarks that they may have. I'll go first. Thank, thank you, uh, Tofa. You did very well. Uh, thanks for the very good uh, presentation and uh, interaction. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Tofa, for sharing this. Uh, so it's nice to see practical applications and ways to protect our community and, and the people in it. Uh, a lot of my research was based on protecting the community. So it's just really nice to see projects moving that way. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your precious time. Wonderful. So I just want to thank everyone again for coming today and to this presentation. Um, yeah, if you want to see the rest of the Science Symposium presentations, you can head on over to Eventbrite and you can follow Squist there and you'll get notifications about all of the upcoming Science Symposium events. Or you can head to squist.ca forward slash events and you'll see our next, uh, our lineup of Science Symposium events there. Our next event is on June 23rd at noon. And then we will have Anat from Ryerson University presenting on our third, um, biotechnology event. And if you want to get updates on the symposium and what's been going on, you can head to our website and we have a science symposium catalog that Noeen has put together and that will be updated every couple of weeks. So feel free to check that out to see what is going on, get all the latest science symposium news. And with that, uh, Noeen, I'd like to see if you have any final remarks or any anything you'd like to exit with. 
Uh, no, I just wanted to say Tofa, it was really nice and good presentation, wonderful work. And I really like how you remember all those difficult names, you know, <laughs> when I was a science student, I think that's the reason why I'm not in biotechnology or you know, in these fields, because it was very hard for me to remember these all names technically. And you were so fluent in saying these things. I was, uh, I was really impressed. And I would like to say thanks to Anjana and Brittany for being here and to be our judges today. And I know uh, it's, uh, it's hard to take out the time, but you are just supporting this cause and we are really grateful from squiz to both of you and ashley thanks for moderating it today and she is also my colleague and uh, it's a it's a very good support actually from her too i would like to say thanks to everyone who came come here and uh, i think uh, that's all we can end the session thank you very much thank you tovan thank you everyone and i thank hope everyone you. has a wonderful rest yeah. of your day thank you bye everyone Bye.